support your already created Zaption videos, but Zaption no longer exists. So um, I'm going to show you two today. The handout, you make this a little bit bigger here. is made with a program called S'more. If you haven't heard of S'more, it is a way that you can make um, electronic newsletters, make, makes it perfect for handouts. The only problem with S'more is I think you can make four or five for free, and then you'll have a, if you want to make more S'mores, then um, they'll um, ask you for a little bit of money for the year. So for me, it's worth it for what I do. If you like to do electronic newsletters for parents and, and or if your school then you can get an account, then um, a lot of people can use it. So everybody get that? I'll come back to this at the end if you didn't get the the link there. I'm gonna zoom out again. Everybody okay? And then I just want to show you before I show you what else is on here, my contact information is at the very bottom. So if you need to get a hold of me or if you want to um, tweet, here's my tweet handle, at Judy Griffin, ADA. All right, so what I've given you here um, for interactive tools are two that we're going to do today. Edpuzzle is free and it's my favorite one. And um, so we're going to look at that one. And then the other one used to be called Educanon. And now it's called Play Posit, but still in places you'll see the word EdCanon. They haven't even changed all that over yet. And it is free to a point. It does have premium features, and um, so we'll look at what some of those are when we get going today. Um, interactive video tools, if you don't know what they are, um, they allow you to take a video from YouTube or a video from um, um, National Geographic, or you can upload your own videos, and you can put in stopping points so that your students then, when you have them watch a video, they will, um, I, I know this right now, if you say I need you to watch this video and you send them the link, you have no idea whether they really watched it or not. This lets you not only put in stopping points and ask them questions, but then the analytics when they're done will allow you to see who watched the video, how they answered those questions, um, and you can make it so that it is for blended or for flipped instruction so that it could be for their homework, they watch the video the night before, and then they come to class ready to um, engage in whatever it is that you want them to do. So there's a lot of different uses for interactive video tools. So these two, are, let's start out with um, Edpuzzle. So I'm gonna have you, I never do show and tell, so you're gonna be my students in my Edpuzzle class today. So I'm gonna, let me get this one started and I'll show you how to get logged in. So I set up a class for the conference today. So you are going to go to edpuzzle.com slash join, edpuzzle.com slash join. This will work on a mobile device. I can see you using your phone. Work on a, a laptop. Doesn't matter. And then if you put in that code for me, that will have you enrolled in my class. Get a what? And oops. And oops. Mm -hmm. I just did one showing how you can go through it now. Let's see. So you are have my class here. Invite your student. If I go to the home page. Take off the word join. 
Yeah. Yeah. Did you create an account then? No. I just logged in with Google. Yeah, just click on your yeah, your Google account. You'll want your kids to sign in. If you notice while we're waiting for some people to get in there, you're going to want to connect you to your Google account. But if you're, how many of you are using um, Google Classroom right now? So you notice up there that if I want students to join this class, or if I want to send this to my class, that Google Classroom is one of the choices. I can tweet this, I can email it to somebody, or you can just post it like this. So what we have to do, edpuzzle.com, I'm a student, and then sign in with your Google account, right? If you have one. Otherwise, you have to fill out the form. Is it working now? Yep. Okay. For those of you that just came in, I'll show you the handout at the end, so you can have the link for that. But for right now, you just go to edpuzzle.com. I'm going to have you be a student in my class. At puzzle.com, choose I'm a student and put in this code for iTech 2016 class. Is it working now, Scott? No. It's not my phone, so please log in and do this kind of problem. Oh. Give you a couple more minutes for those that just came in. At puzzle.com. And we're going to keep our fingers crossed because we're going to have you all watching the video. <clears throat> we can choose from two different videos. Um, and we'll see how that goes with everybody streaming video at the same time. If nothing else, write down W-U-B-A-D-A-B. -A -A I can always come back to that. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to hit refresh so I can have my students in here. <clears throat> and you should start to see your name show up up there. So far I have 20 of you in. questions. Those of you that were in first might have time to watch both of them. Okay. 
The nice thing about this is when you pick a video, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, when you pick a video, you can add a due date. So these are due tomorrow. If you guys aren't done today, you'll still have time. You can go home and watch them. Um, over here on the right, I have the option of the before I look at progress, where I can share an assignment. And again, you can share just this one with a link. You can put it in bed code and put it on your website. You can share it to your Google Classroom. You can email it to your students. You can even tweet it out if you want to. Uh, no, I could send you this link, and then I could send it to you, and then you could just watch it that way also. But then it would be like a public one. Right. If I look at progress, this is where I can see um, how you guys did, if you finished or not. So as an X there, you didn't, did anybody get it finished? A few of you did, or just now? Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. So I can see who finished it, and I can see what your grade is. Now I only asked um, a couple questions. One was multiple choice, so it's going to grade that automatically. That one where I asked you what the elements were, that one was um, open response, and so I as a teacher am going to have to go in and grade that one. I can look at it by student. So Ryan, can I pick on you? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Um, so I can go and see what Ryan wrote. So Ryan has his answers here, and then uh, he just put in the letter U there for the, the four new elements, because we're just playing around with this. So I can see it by student. I can also go up here and see his video views, how much he's watched, how many correct responses he has, um, when it was turned in. So you have a lot of analytics that you can look at by student. Or if I back up, we're doing this for formative assessment, I can look at it by question. So it looks like 13 out of 28 of you who actually uh, watched the video got this one right, that carbon, what, el what element you thought that was, that Ellen was holding up. And of course, they haven't named those four new elements yet, so nobody took the time to go and investigate that and see what those are. Then I have the option here, I can export those. And of course, that would go as a CSV file. For those who don't know what that means, common separated values, which means it'll go to a spreadsheet. So you could import it into, um, Excel, or you can import it into Google Sheets, or you could even, I'm not sure, depending on your learning management system, maybe upload it into your learning management system. All right, so what I'd like you to do now is maybe log out as a student and sign in as a teacher, because I'm gonna show you around a little bit and show you how you can find and start a video. On the student side, when it said archived projects, who archives it? Does the student do that once it's completed, or is that on the teacher side? I think it's on the teacher side, where I can archive and say, well, everybody finished and I'm done with that one. And then when they move on, is it always in their account? Uh, it should be, yeah. So they can probably go back and watch it. Okay. Is there a way where you can look at like all of your students' answers at the same time, instead of just seeing like an average of the class or having to click on every single student? Um, on that first page, let me go back to there. Um, here, I could, I can go by student, but I can at least see their grades. You mean for each question? Yeah, so you wouldn't be, you'd have to click on each kid to see like if they missed number one or two, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is my options here as far as I can look at it with the highest grades, the lowest grades, or back and forth. But that's all I have for options for that, this one. Good questions. Okay, so if you sign in as a teacher, um, first of all, if you just click on the search up here, you'll notice, and somebody asked me about this, these are all the channels that you can pull videos from. So I have the option to pull them from, if we are signed up as a district, then I can get them from my school. So I can have a place, if we get signed up as a district, where we can upload school videos or teacher-made videos, and then I can go and get a video from there and put in the stopping points on it. Um, if I don't change anything over here on the left, I can go up here and just search for, somebody give me a topic. Something you're going to teach in the next week or so. Something pretty general. States of matter. World War II. <laughs> First one I heard. 
So if I search for World War II, um, I probably need to put that in quotation marks, um, you'll see that when you look at a video, some of them have a green question mark on them, and that means that somebody has added at least one question to them. So you'd have to go and look at them. If they have the red with the scissors, that means it was a longer video that's been trimmed. So let's go look at this one. Uh, let's see. If I'm a teacher and I'm trying to pick something out for a World War II, I don't see anything in particular for World War II. I might, well right now, um, I'm searching Ed Puzzle. That's what I have selected. So I'm gonna switch over to YouTube and see what they have for World War II. Okay, so I can pull in any of these videos, except for now, these don't have questions added to them yet. So I'm gonna go back to Ed Puzzle just to show you how this works. So if you find one that somebody else did, um, and I hover over it, I have a few options. I can make a copy of it. So what that does is it saves under my content. So it just duplicates it. Okay? Um, I could click here and play it and watch it. And I notice that this one doesn't have any stopping points on it. So I have to add those myself. Um, there's another option for, it's either here or on the other side for use it. And if I go to use it, then I am, um, I'm able to start creating one myself. Now this one, there is one question here. So somebody played around with this, saved it as public, and they only added one little question here. I'm not sure what it is. So once you find a video, and here's what you're going to do. First thing is, look at how long it is. This is 9 minutes and 10 seconds. Not too bad for high school kids, but if you have a video more than two or three minutes for your little kids, you're going to want to crop just the part you want them to see. So you'll notice that the scissors are already selected, which gives you these red handles. And I have the ability to crop from the beginning, the end, or both to shorten it. So you just drag the little crop tools and then click this scissor. So you can change when it starts and when it starts. Mongols today, we are talking about World War I. I know this isn't World War II, but... Okay, your other next option. When you're done... Um, oh, because I cropped out that question. I'll say yes. Alright, so I've got it cropped. Now the second button up here is if I want to add an audio track. And what that does is it allows you to take out the audio that's in the current video and replace it with yours. So if you find a great video but the audio is not so great or doesn't say things simple enough for your students or difficult enough for your students, this will let me replace it that I have to be able to talk from beginning to end. It's not just for a section of it. So really that one is to replace the existing audio track with your own voice. Now what do you think about this as a teacher? But think about it if the students create this. So you give them a video to watch and have them say what's going on in the video, what's going on in that experiment that they're watching, or what's going on in that book that they are, that they are hearing, or have them read it. So um, that one would be a good challenge for them. Your next option, so you're going to want to play. There are no Mongols today. We are talking about World War I. I mean, this is a longer video. So I might want to drag this playhead. Oh, I'm still on audio track. I'll go here to audio. Okay, so you want to stop it where you want to put in audio notes or a question. Now, audio notes is different than an audio track. Audio notes means all I'm going to do is record something, and when the kids get to that point, then it's here, they hear my voice, and then it goes on from there. It's not asking them a question. So it works. Let me uh, get this one. Alright, so I'm going to play this a little bit here. I'm going to trash this one because we just stopped it with the beat. I'm going to let it go for a minute. Alright. There are no Mongols today. We are talking about World War I. Okay, stop it where you want to. Now I've already got my audio note clicked, so I just click on it here. And now it's recording my voice. So this is World War I and not World War II. Sorry about that. And now that's done, so now I can, I'm going to go back, and now I want to add some questions. So it's going to upload my voice, and I'm going to keep this playing. 
and now it's recording my voice. So this is World War I and not World War II. Sorry about that. Okay, so it's not the track. I'm just putting in an audio comment. So I'm filming this in 2014, which means that the Great War started 100 years ago, and the World War I centenary is just so hot right now, I can't miss out on it. So most historians agree that the event that started World War I was the assassination of Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand on June 28, 1914. But beyond that, there's... Okay, I'm going to pause it. Now, if I want to add a question, I've already clicked the question mark, I've stopped it where I want it to, and now I'm going to click this little card down here so I can go in and put in my question. So I have three types of questions. The first one is that open-ended question. So I might say, what started World War I? Let's just review. What started World War I? So were they listening? Or do I want to front load something that's coming up? So you have uh, all these options here for your open response. You can even do math teachers, superscript, sub um, subscript. You can insert a link. You can insert a picture. Um, and you can even insert equations. So you can find some good math videos and you have the ability to do that. Your next option is multiple choice. You have the same options, but here you put your choices and if you want three or four choices, you just scroll down and say, I want to add another choice. Down here, add an answer. And then you choose which one's the right answer. You guys have done those before with Google quizzes and some of that stuff. The last one is just an, a comment, not an audio comment, just that written comment that you saw when I did um, the one with Ellen. So you can do that. Now, you don't have to just do one question. You notice that up here in the right corner it says one of one. So I can ask a multiple choice question, and then I could insert a comment, or I could ask an open response question, or I could ask three multiple choice questions at some point at this stopping point. So you can have as many of those as you want. So then you would just type that in and then save it. So let's go back and uh, let's see. I'm going to ask an open response question. What started World War One? Question mark. We'll save that. There's not a lot of agreement. Others say the war really started after France first and did it, like when Germany declared war or when Russia mobilized. So look at and so that's kind of how it goes to push your starting points in. And then when you're done, you assign this to your class. So to get your classes started, let me see if I can get out of, any questions about how to create one with those tools? It's just those four tools. Questions about that much? Yes? You can't cut multiple times. You have to cut the, the length of that one section, right? Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, and it's always either beginning or end. I can't. I can't splice it in the middle and then cut from there. I'd have to work up my cropping. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. After you make the cut, do you lose one? I just got in. Do you lose one side? Or yeah. You when, you, when you crop, if you're using the crop, you're taking a, we took a 9 minute, 10 second video. Now it's 7 minutes and 30 seconds. But if I wanted to take a 20, 21 minute video and break it into three 7 minute videos, is that possible? Um, you can only cut from beginning and end. You probably have to upload it three times. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got that. Videos. Okay, three different videos. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's, that's the only way I think you could do it, because there's no, no way to splice it in the middle. Yes? I have two. Um, the first one is captioning. I work with deaf kids. Is there a way to go in? Do I have to manually add in captions? Or do do I you I already just... have captioning turned on in YouTube? Oh, Yes. For them? But yeah, YouTube is not always accurate. It's no. not always accurate. But um, I shouldn't know if this particular site had any way to do that. No, unless you want to do those written comments, but that would take you forever. Forever, right. Yeah. Okay, and then the second question on the app on an iPhone. I cannot get in as a teacher. It only brings up the student version. Is That's there... probably possible. So you're going to have to do everything as a teacher here, yeah. and then the students cause you can use any device to look at it, to watch them. So there's no teacher version of the app. I have to go through a computer a computer online yeah. to, okay, to get to the teacher version. Got it. Okay. Any other questions about this? Much. You mentioned about student uses. The students, do the students get the option that the teachers have if they were creating this, or mm -hmm. do they have to sign in the um, you know, I, I don't know about that. Um, cause I've never signed in as a, just strictly as a student. I've always been on this end of it. So that's a good question. I don't know. 
if they have to sign in as the teacher or not. But to replace that, that would be a good question. Somebody want to explore that? Okay. Um, when you're done, you're going to click on finish. And then you have some options here. You can assign it to a class right here, or you can just finish it. Um, and it could say, who's going to do it? So you could have uploaded. You notice I have a couple classes here that I've uploaded from um, Google Classroom. So kids don't have to go and put the code in or anything. You just upload all their kids from Google Classroom and it brings in their usernames. So you can assign it to uh, which classes you're going to use it, or you can share it with anyone. That's where you can give them that link. And then here's your superpowers. Prevent skipping, if you want to or not. That's the default, is that it prevents skipping. And you could even put in a due date. So I could do all of this. I could assign it to your class today. Um, and then I can either send it to you now or I could do it later. And that goes into my content. And that's the second one up there. So any ones that you have either borrowed from somebody else in Edpuzzle when you do a search, or that you have found in, I'm going to go back here to World War II. So if you found that on YouTube, you notice that these don't have the question marks and the cropping because you're just searching YouTube for a video of World War II that you want to bring in. Now, one other thing about this, oh, besides looking at all of these uh, places where you can get videos, the other thing is there is a Chrome extension. So if you're, a, if you're going to be using Google Chrome, there's a Chrome extension. And when I'm on YouTube, let me just go there real quick. The internet seems to be, keep my fingers crossed, seems to be working great today. Not so much yesterday. If I go to YouTube and find a video, so I'll just pull up one of mine. Okay, because I have the extension installed, I have this button show up, edit with Edpuzzle. So since I already have an Edpuzzle account, all I have to do is go here and click on this, takes me to Edpuzzle. That's cool. That, that I'm ready to add questions to it. So I don't have to start an Edpuzzle and go searching for it. Anytime I find a YouTube that, uh, that works great, on, that only works on YouTube, doesn't work in Vimeo or any of those other ones. It's just for YouTube. Okay? So that's, um, if, you're, if you're familiar with Chrome extensions, that is Edit with Edpuzzle, it's called, is the Chrome extension, and it just runs in the background. So anytime I go to any YouTube video, whether they're mine or somebody else's, then I have the option to edit with Edpuzzle. Yes? If I go to my contact, content, excuse me, and I want to edit, is, can I edit after I share? Um, no, you have to stop sharing, and then you can edit. Okay. Yes. Okay, other questions? If, okay, so if, if I understand that if I import my kids to Google Classroom, and I assign this to Google Classroom, then they get the poll, then mm -hmm. I get all the analytics back. Yes. If I, if I attach this to my Weebly, and my kids that are from Google Classroom watch it without me assigning it through Google Classroom. The only will I reason still get the analytics. Yes, you'll still get the analytics because you'll still be assigning it to that classroom, whether it's in Weebly or not. Right. Um, you'll still have those kids uploaded, so you have all their names right. from Google Classroom. That's what it's importing. So it'll work both ways. Other questions. It's not really a question, but one really thing I really like about this is you can upload the video right to Edpuzzle. So like that, in case, like at our school, YouTube is blocked. So then we don't have to go create a YouTube account or a Vimeo account. You can just upload right to Edpuzzle. Also, I think that kind of helps with like, sometimes if YouTube is slow because there's so many people in the world trying to get on it, mm -hmm. it, it moves a little bit smoother. So right. the kids can watch that. So. Right, good. Okay, so you can take a minute and play with that, and then we're going to switch over and look at play pause it real quick. Just shout out any other questions that you have. You notice, by the, by the way, since I have World War II up there, if I go to number file, I'm not sure what the world were, the word world war or the number Roman numeral two is probably in number file somewhere. 
And I think just like any other search, if I put quotes around this, that should take care of that. It's just one. Must be something about World War II in that video. In number file. If you're a math teacher, number file is a good one. Encryption. Encryption? <laughs> yeah, name encryption. Oh. Now I just see this big long number, so. Okay, any other questions or comments about Ed Puzzle? Yes. So the kids can, from the student side, can they create, upload, and edit their own video? Or That's that? something that I haven't been able to do because I teach adults. And so um, I had you guys log in as a student. Are you able to? I logged out and logged in no. as a teacher, oh. so I'd have to go back in. Yeah, you'd have to log. I, I haven't, that's a good question, and I need to try that. But um, I think you can because I think the kids should be able to make and do those, replace those audio tracks. But I'm not sure how that works. Okay. They might have to go in under your account. Okay. Is there any or any tools that don't it doesn't look like it's going to do it that allow you to annotate on top of the video with it that talk to the comments as well? Or Zaption did that. With Zaption you could you could draw pictures or you could have them draw right on the video. You need to circle the whatever, stops the video, put a circle around and we lost that when we lost adaption. So that was why adaption was my favorite one. But good question. Okay. The other one that we're going to look at today is called Play Pause It for a good reason. If you think Play Pause It used to be called Educanon, and this one has what they call bulbs. But it has it's the same idea, so I'm not really going to get into it much, except for the fact that um, without the premium. You only get, here's the cost for this one. So with basic for free, you can create bulbs, you can monitor your students, and you have a 50 megabyte storage limit. So you can do some on here, but it only gives you three types of questions that you can ask instead of all of them. Just want you to take a look at what you have up here. And don't you just hate it when they say, oh, if you're a whole school, you need to ask us what the price is. Because they want you to talk to them. They won't give you a price until they, until they talk to you. But, okay, so um, this is what comes with premium. So all your lessons in this particular one can be exported to CSV, not in the free version. Um, you can print out worksheets. Why in the world would you want to do that? I don't know. <laughs> the W word is not my favorite thing, but you can, in a low tech setting, or you can have them watch the video and have a worksheet next to them, you can do that. Um, you can access the full power of the PlayPosit community. Right now, in the free version, you can only pull in so many from the, the, the community until they say you've reached your limit. So with the premium version, you can use it all of them, 400,000 and counting. They have um, higher order blooms. You can connect to the World Wide Web. So these are some tools that in the, free, in the free version you don't have. You cannot connect to the web. You can't give them a web link. Um, advanced cropping in this one for the premium version. Um, you can put in polling questions so they can do some voting. And they can do a live chat while they're watching their video. So without premium, you can't do any of that. So I apologize ahead of time for that, but um, I'm not a salesperson for them. All right, so this one, if you just go to playposit.com, I don't have anything assigned for you because I thought you might want to maybe spend a little bit of time with Edpuzzle and try and get a video ready, or you can just go and look at this one. But once you get signed in, I'll go up here to my dashboard. So the nice thing about this is my code for my class always stays the same. I will always be E1DA3A. I can laminate that and post it if I want to. The other nice thing is, of course, it integrates with Google Classroom again. And it integrates with Edmodo and a couple of, the, I, I think, Schoology. I'm not sure about that one. Um, so this is just kind of my dashboard with the recent video bulbs that I have looked at or that I have worked on. If I go to bulbs, this is where you can go and search for them. So here I'm going to look for World War II again. 
So you put in your topic, no lessons found in pre-made balls. Um, anything with just World War? You'd think in 400,000 lessons they would have something about World War II. Uh, I'll just put in math. All right, so you can do, oh, it's still looking at mine. Sorry, sorry, that's why. I'm on my bulb, see that little line up there? There's pre-made bulbs and then there's different video channels. So let me switch over to pre-made bulbs. My fault. But now let's look for a little work. So I put in my topic, and then I can narrow it down here by popular or newest, what grade level I'm teaching, what subject I want, and or I can say by standard. So I do like that part of it. So then you can do the same thing here. You can, you can click on it and watch it, or you can click on use it. And I don't know if this one's got any stopping points on it or not. So it's just a, the same kind of thing, but uh, a little bit different. Hi, I'm John Green. This is Crash Course World History. And today we're going to talk about World War II. Bye. Now this one I can skip ahead. On test. They start on one day and they end on another day. And they're caused by social, political, and economic These are the stopping points on this one. in a multiple choice kind of manner. Except not really. Like, like when did World War II start? In September 1939, when the Nazis invaded Poland? I'd say no. It actually... Okay. Um, let me go back to here. So, um, then you can go to monitor. And that's where you can see how your students are doing. So you guys didn't do any today. Um, I've got some in this class. I want you to see what the analytics look like in this one. They're a little bit different. Nope, not that class. Hope I didn't delete them all. Some of these I haven't used in a couple years. Let's see if anybody watched this one in this class. Nope. You change class. Yeah. Okay. So that's what this one looks like. Is this more what you were asking me about as yeah. far as being able to look at a question by question? Yeah, I like this better um, so that you could look down and see who got what right and what you're going to need to reteach. So that one looks a little bit better. So that's by that video. Or I could click on Wendy, I think, and I should be able to, oh, because I'm using the free version. Um, see premium monitoring? Try here and give us $96 per year. So this is what you get for free, but at least you get this layout. But I can't download those, I can't export them. And I'd give anything if Zaption hadn't gone to some, some another idea, but. Okay, what questions do you have for me about interactive video? I think your kids will love it. You know how kids love video anyway. Um, so as long as they're on YouTube, let's give them a reason for watching it and um, give you an idea of whether or not they watched it or not. So in your blended, your flipped, or your differentiated classroom, um, I think this will be a perfect tool for you. So you're welcome, I think I'm a little bit early. You're welcome to stay and play around with this and ask me any questions or you can head on to your next session, but thanks for coming today and have a great rest of your week.